My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today we are going to discuss a cheerful topic, the oncoming greatest depression owing to public debt, especially public debt of the United States. Let's start with some, some heartwarming statistics based on data published by the European Commission. I'm quoting. The European Union's aggregate deficit to GDP ratio decreased from minus 4.7% in 2021 to minus 3.3% in 2022. Quite a drop, by the way. The debt to GDP ratio decreased from 87.4% at the end of 21 to 83.5% at the end, end of 22. And at the end of 22, it ranged from 18.5% in Estonia to 172.6%, where else? In Greece. European Union government debt accounted for 83.1% of the area's nominal GDP in June 19, uh, 2023, compared with a ratio of 83.4 in the previous quarter. It was an all, at an all-time high of 92% in March 2021, and a record law of 62.3% in December 2007. At the end of the second quarter of 2023, the general government gross debt to GDP ratio in the euro area, the EA20, stood at 90, 90.3% compared with 90.7% at the end of the first quarter of 2023. So debt is going down quite dramatically, I would say. Compared with the second quarter of 2022, continues the European Commission, the government debt to GDP ratio also decreased in both the euro area from 93.5% to 90.3% and the EU at large from 85.9% to 83.1%. At the end of the second quarter of 2023, debt securities accounted for 83.4% of euro area and for 82.9% of EU general government debt. Loans made up 13.8% and 14.3% respectively, and currency and deposits represented 2.8% of euro area and 2.7% of EU government debt. Intergovernmental lending, IGL, as percentage of GDP at the end of the second quarter of 2023, stood at 1.6% in the euro area and 1.3% in the EU, all these parameters are extremely encouraging. It seems that the European Union is uh, winning off its addiction to government debt. But the corresponding picture in the United States is far, far gloomier. The total federal debt in the United States amounted to 34 trillion US dollars the end of 2022. About 1.2% of the country, about 1.2 times the country's annual economic output, and higher than even in the wake of the Great Depression and World War II. Republican tax cuts, coupled with ambitious democratic climate, healthcare, and infrastructure initiatives, plunged the United States into a sea of crimson red. Low interest rates, growing employment, and minuscule inflation masked the growing problem having kept debt repayments stagnant and sustainable even as the economy was humming along. In November 2023, Moody's was the first to take notice of the impact that skyrocketing inflation and interest rates would have on the manageability of the debt mountain. The rating agency reduced the outlook for US debt from, uh, to negative from stable. Both Janet Yellen and Paul Krugman sounded the alarm. Krugman wrote in an op-ed in the New York Times, serious deficit reduction, a bad idea a decade ago, is a good idea now. Interest rates on inflation-protected government bonds have soared from near zero a decade ago to more than 2% currently. Refinancing deficits and past borrowing has, have thus become considerably more expensive. Theoretically, unemployment, unemployment having dropped from 8% in 2010 to 3.7% last year, should allow the government to cut back its spending on its spending. But inflation has become a major risk. Slashing the federal budget pumps money into an already overheated economy and props up 
multiple asset bubbles. It's a no-win situation. Inevitably, in the irredeemably polarized political scene in the United States, Democrats and Republicans fail to even discuss a joint plan of action. The former Democrats want to tax the rich. The latter Republicans want to cut entitlements, such as Medicaid, and so effectively tax the poor. The real remedies, increasing taxation on all households, rich and poor alike, slashing defense and Medicare spending, these are off the table. In an election year special, and in the face of multiple geopolitical challenges and threats. But time is running out. Urgent steps are needed. And in the absence of these steps, the USA will find itself mired in yet another grave recession, or possibly worse, it may go bankrupt. Should this co-occur with a meltdown of China's Potemkin economy, the world would face the greatest depression of all, and multiple mini-Hitlers already eagerly await precisely this outcome.